What's going on, everybody? Y'all, we got something a little different today, but in the vein of what we do. This is a video on the Beamish Museum. How to spend a day at the Living Museum of the North. Interesting. This, I have so, no idea what to expect. This is where they make beams or kite beams? More of the <laughs> Beamish? What is this? I'm there I've, for it. I have no idea, but apparently it's an unmissable UK attraction. Only one way to find that out, though. Are you ready? Yeah, man. I was literally born ready for this moment. Hell Let's yeah. Three, two, one. Today we're going to go back in time at Beamish, the living museum of the North. Inspired by Scandinavian folk museums, Beamish is a very popular, interactive, open-air museum in County Durham. Here you'll discover what life was like in the northeast of England during the Georgian, Edwardian and Victorian times. This video will show you how we spent an unforgettable day at Beamish to give you an idea of what you could see and do on your trip. We'll wrap up the video by sharing relevant practical information, tips and anything you may want to be aware of before your visit. Already, I'll, right out the gate, this is, uh, this sounds awesome. So it's a, it's like a whole town that's living in the past, but like playing a part. So it's like a whole, what? Okay, it's a, so it's like a, an attraction. Yeah, it's like a choose your own adventure type of thing. But in like, uh, ye olden times, but not, not that far back. Uh, wow, let's, let's, let's just keep yeah, going. Yeah, let's How dive in, because I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm mildly confused and insanely unsettled, but very, very intrigued. Yeah, yeah. Day started with the newly opened 1950s Front Street Terrace. There wasn't a huge amount to see here just yet, as it is still a work in progress. However, there was a cafe, complete to the jukebox, playing 50s music. Nice! Elizabeth Hairdressers, based on a shop in Middlesbrough where you can get a 1950s hairstyle. And a replica of the home of recognised artist Norman Cornish. We also popped by the Welfare Hall and Community Centre, but there was a learning activity going on with the school trip, so we didn't film inside. However, we did get some clips of these fun old school advertising signs lining the fence outside. Hey, birds custard. Didn't we try that? I think we did. Yeah. Did it, yeah, so... we tried that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if I can run it. I back mean, granted, right. not not that one. <laughs> right. Right. They're around since then. That's kind of cool. Yeah, birds custard. Yeah, we tried that. Um, we'll probably link it at the end of the video. Yeah, man. This video, yeah. However, we did get some clips of these fun old school advertising signs lining the fence outside. Right by the 1950s front terrace is the 1900s town, where you can walk up the high streets lined with shops and houses and find out what life had been like in the years running up to the First World War. You might also recognize this area if you're a Downton Abbey fan, as it featured in the movie and the final episode of the TV show. Or oh, so I've read. I've not seen the show, sorry. <laughs> Take your time exploring. Yeah, I haven't seen the show either. No um, idea. My Nana might have seen it because she loves a lot of British dramas. Uh, like Call the Midwife is one of her favorite shows. It's on Netflix in the US, so I don't know. Uh, there you go. Have, have I struck a nerve in some of our audience here? Let, let us know. I have no, but this scene right here looks like you need to ask uh, for four candles for sure. <laughs> Right here, this this market right here. Did did you say four candles or four candles? I said four candles. <laughs> oh man. man. I'll just go play with my eggs box for 360. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. During <sighs> the 1900s town, as it has to be one of the highlights of a trip to Beamish. Visit the homes of Ravensworth Terrace and stop in the numerous traditional shops that line the streets. Visit the chemist shop, which was named after the real-life chemist William Smith, who worked in Durham. Explore the photographers where, ordinarily, you can have your photo taken in period costume, although this is on hold at the moment. Learn more about the Freemasons in the Masonic Hall, visit the bank and even go down to see the vaults, rats and all. Pop into the early 1900s garage to check out the collection of vehicles. I don't think you have to be a car enthusiast to enjoy looking at all the vintage cars on display. Mm. 
if you're feeling a bit peckish, then let your nose guide you into the incredible smelling bakery offering traditional, freshly baked goods. Ooh. If you don't actually want to buy anything, you can still pop in and take a look. There's also a sweet shop where the walls are lined with jars of old-fashioned sweets. You can even watch them being made in the back of the store. After spending a lot longer than we expected in the 1900s town, we tore ourselves away and hopped aboard one of the trams. All right, before we talk about the trams there, that's like right up my alley there. That's all that super old cool, man. stuff and not just the food. You know I love my food, but like that, that right there, like the old vintage cars. And I hope by the time I go in June that they, you could actually take pictures with that ye olden uh, camera right there. Yeah. Yeah, man. I just, I, <laughs> is it the one that they have to light the shit on fire? So it's like, boom. And it's like a little explosion, but um, this this to me is 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 the real shit, you know. Like, yeah, I I feel like this, I will gravitate towards this overseeing city anytime you can. Like, hey, let's go out into the country, out and explore. I'm there for that. City yeah. life too fast. I'm good, you know. But this was what would draw me, you mm. know. Yeah, yeah, that's when when I we put out stuff uh, asking what are some things off the beaten path that uh, I should visit in the in the UK and Ireland. This is the type of stuff I'm talking yep. about right here. Yep. That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah. Sitting on the top floor gave us a view over the extensive museum land. It really is a big place, and as much as we like walking, it was definitely an enjoyable way to get around. Oh yeah. We exited the tram at 1900's Pitts Village, home to mining families in the northeast of England. Our first stop was the century-old Hutton Silver Band Hall. After the Colliery Band was founded in 1887, the original band hall was built for them in 1912. After falling into disuse, former band members donated the building to Beamish. In the Pitts Village you can walk through the original miners' cottages on Francis Street. These homes were brought to Beamish from Hetton Le Hole after originally being built in the 1860s by the Hetton Coal Company. The costume villagers getting on with the day inside made it feel so much more real. It did actually feel a little bit like we were breaking into somebody's home. <laughs> Just across from the miners' cottages is the 1850s Pitt Hill Methodist Chapel, where Sunday school would have been held. Next to the chapel stands the school, where you can walk around a classroom of tiny desks, way too small for us to sit in, and play old-fashioned games in the yard. For lunch we stopped at Davies Fried Fish Shop, where they serve traditional fish and chips actually cooked in coal fire ranges. Wow. They were absolutely delicious. After lunch we visited the colliery yard. Wow, wow, that's uh, old schools and fish and chips and... Yeah. Man. This man. is a this is a, a a sweet sounding place, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So do do the people? I like I've heard about these kind of places, like whole towns. Like usually they have them out west, like a frontier town where the whole right. town is like playing along during that time frame. Like yeah, yeah. Like like this town ain't big enough for the two of us. Yeah, that like, type of thing. Yeah, you know, like every high noon, there's a a uh, shootout or what is it a duel or yeah, something yeah. so uh, that this is kind of like the equivalent of that over in the UK okay okay hey i'm i'm there for it man more power to the people that that um are hired to to be there like that's oh, yeah. cool oh yeah it, oh, it could also keep be kind of like colonial williamsburg yes like, have you ever there been it there is. there it is that's it yeah colonial yeah. williamsburg 100% yeah. hit the nail on the head that is the equivalent. That is yeah. the equivalent. That's the parallel. Yeah, exactly. Yard. At the peak of coal production in 1913, over 165,000 men and boys worked in Durham's grueling mines. Mm. We started at the engine shed where we watched coal being shoveled into the engine of one of the colliery locomotives, firing it up. Oh, nice. A staff member told us they had to do this slowly as the engine had been cold for a while and if it heated up too quickly it would damage it. From here we went into the wooden Heapstead building. It was right here that workers were lowered into the mine and coal was brought back up to the surface. Wow. The lift cages were raised and lowered using the winding engine which you can see in the adjacent stone building. You could actually take a guided tour down into the drift mine. 
Sadly, we didn't have time to squeeze this in on our visit, which is a shame because it sounds like it would be such an interesting experience. Yeah. If you've been down the drift mine at Beamish, we'd love to hear about it. We I'd go down the drift mine. Yeah. I Just mean, see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm good without going into the depths of the earth. <laughs> yeah. My time will come when I'll be there soon enough. <laughs> I don't need to. I don't need to get into the ground yet. <laughs> Whatever, man. You just don't. You're just not as adventurous anymore. I just, I just, I just know. I just know. I've escaped death this long. I don't need to tempt it anymore. I gotta <laughs> become a hard target. <laughs> God, man. We left the colliery and went even further back in time to the Georgian period of the 1820s. Walking by the cow pasture, we came to a tiny heather thatched cottage, which is actually a recreation of the home of Joseph Headley an acclaimed Georgian quilter who was murdered in 1826. Wow. Just past the cottage is the medieval church of St. Helen, which was originally built in Eston. After suffering from decades of vandalism, the church was dismantled and then rebuilt in Beamish, brick by brick. Keep your eyes peeled and you might see numbers on the wall. As part of the deconstruction, all the bricks were carefully numbered so the church could then be rebuilt exactly as it had been. Up the hill was the beautifully restored Pockley Old Hall, which would have been let to the tenant farmers who cared for the land. This is one of the original buildings found at the site of the Beamish Museum. In front of the house is the ornamental garden, which will probably look much better if you aren't visiting in winter like we did. In the house you'll walk through rooms like a smoky working kitchen, complete with a cast iron range and brick bread oven. Downstairs you can also see the dining room, the pantry, and the scullery, which would have been used for washing dishes and doing other domestic chores. Upstairs you'll find the bedrooms. You'll also see a room where grain was stored and joints of meat were hung, ready to be smoked. Mm. As time- Man, <laughs> that bed, seeing that bedpan and also that uh, those animals hanging down, like, yep, that's definitely old school. Uh, yeah, it's old school. Old school. Because if you see that nowadays, you're probably in the home of a freaking serial killer. So probably yeah. or or a a butcher. Oh, and, a butcher. Uh, yeah, yeah, which uh the line between them is uh quite blurred depending on who you ask. Yeah. Yeah. As long as humans not on it, I'm good to go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and was ticking on, we hot-footed it to the 1940s farm area where you can see what farm life was like during the Second World War. Unfortunately, during our visit, the farmhouse was closed due to storm damage, but the cottage was still open. At this point, it was museum closing time. Even though we were there from open until close, we didn't manage to see everything at Beamish, but I do think we managed to squeeze a lot in. If you are looking to visit yourself, then stick around while I share some useful information and tips for your trip. Alright, let's hear them. Beamish is located in the beautiful countryside of County Durham. If you're driving, set the direction. Oh, this is in Newcastle! Okay, okay. And on my UK trip, I do have plans to be in Newcastle, so this is perfect. Hey, man. Wow. Oh, my goodness. This, oh, like, my it, goodness. It, <laughs> the first we just, time, like, something lines up. Yes. It's all coming, falling into place here. Let's go. Come on. Directions to DH90RG. Parking at the museum is free, and there seems to be plenty of space. Beamish is accessible by the number 28 bus from Newcastle City Centre or the 8 from Sunderland Interchange. Okay. Alternatively, Chestola Street is the nearest train station, so if you can get a train to here, you can then catch a bus on to Beamish. Currently, if you would like to arrive in the morning, then you do need to book your entry slot ahead of time, but if you want to arrive from 1pm onwards, then you can just show up. Because there is a lot to do, I would suggest booking one of the earlier slots and spending the full day there. Tickets are $19.50 per adult, $11.50 per child, and student or senior tickets are £14.50. Not bad. There are also family ticket options available. This ticket then does get you unlimited access to the museum for a full year, including daytime events but not evening events. Special events are held throughout the year, so check the Beamish website to see what's coming up. Okay, next point. Beamish is huge. While I think you could pop into each area in the space of a day, there is simply too much there to explore every corner and take in every detail, and they're continuing to expand the museum, so really, if you live close enough to the museum, then you'll probably want to make the most of that unlimited annual access with your tickets. 
I would suggest having an idea of anything you and your family definitely want to see and prioritising that before you get too distracted by all of the other things there are to see there. If there isn't anything in particular that you already know that you want to prioritise, then I would suggest focusing on the 1900s town and the 1900s pit village and colliery. My advice would be to start in the 1900s town so you can visit the shops with lower crowds and shorter queues. Okay, okay. In the spirit of not rushing... This might be actually a great channel to fall down the rabbit hole of. It's very fitting to what's about to happen to Spence. Yes. We um, are kicking him out of the country and he is going abroad. For about a month. Three a month. weeks. Spence yeah. abroad. Yes. An idiot abroad. Yeah. As some people would probably consider it. <laughs> the sequel to the series. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, but hey, the Beamish Museum. That sounds like a very interesting day spent in... Uh, so it's like you have to pick an era an era and then stay there the whole day and just like talk to people exactly let's kind of no-brainer yeah it'd be it, honestly i would say it'd be like trying to take disney world in as a whole in one day right which That's is impossible. A, a impossibility 100 percent right. impossible yeah. so the same applies to this since it is big take your time leave something to come back to 100 so, percent. so okay and i'll be in newcastle a couple of days not just one so I'll definitely uh, have some have some time to explore that. So yeah, that'd be interesting, man. What other things around there should I check out while I'm there? And what did they miss about the Beamish Museum? Put those down below. Yeah, for sure, I'm interested. If I were you, I'd be like, please, I'm gonna read all the comments on this one. Man, <laughs> I do have. I'm just uh, not saying it with the intensity that you are. I'm being oh, no. a little more reserved I am, about I am it. I'm always intense. Yes, you are. Oh. We um, both have our moments. We do. We sure do. But I'm excited. I'm excited for you to, to see Beamish. Sort of Beamish. Yes, me too. I can't wait. Anyway, y'all, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing, watching another video. And the biggest way to support us is uh, we have a Patreon link down in the description yeah. and also links to all of our other channels i have a music channel and a food channel yep. daniel has a music reaction channel what? and a kids kids stories channel as Crazy. well if yeah. that is something you are into link down below anyway wash your hands grab your toes wipe your butt blow your nose embrace the suck unplug and go on an adventure guys and we'll see y'all next time later fellas we could be that mistake do this.